Welcome to One Off Coder. I'm Dr. G. Vang, and today I'm going to talk about PyBBN. PyBBN is an Apache 2.0 licensed API for inference using Bayesian Belief Network. A few of the capabilities that come with PyBBN includes, but is not limited to, the following exact inference with discrete variables, exact inference with Gaussian variables, causal inference, data sampling, and Bayesian Belief Network synthesis. In this talk, I'll review what is a Bayesian belief network. I'll quickly go over inference. And then lastly, I'll give an example of how to create a Bayesian belief network and perform inference using PyBBN. A Bayesian belief network is defined as a pair G and P, where G is a directed acyclic graph, P is a joint probability distribution, and the pair G and P satisfy the Markov condition. As you can see, there are many moving parts to a Bayesian belief network. However, it's not terribly difficult to understand each of these component parts and to bring them together to understand the whole. Bayesian belief networks are sometimes just called Bayesian networks. I'll use the two terms interchangeably. Let's look at the graphical component of a Bayesian network. The graphical component of a Bayesian network is also called the structure of a Bayesian network. The graph G in a Bayesian network is also defined as a pair V and E where V are the vertices, or nodes, and E are the directed edges. The vertices in V corresponds to variables, and when drawn, are often drawn as circles. The edges in E are directed edges, and each edge is drawn between two nodes. Since the edges are directed as opposed to undirected, they lend themselves to causal interpretation. But interpreting a Bayesian network as a causal Bayesian network is a highly advanced subject, and we'll skip it for now. Just know that when you see a directed edge between two nodes, you can at least interpret the relationship to mean that one node influences another. Now the graph in a Bayesian network is a special type of graph. It is said to be a directed acyclic graph or a DAG. The directed part comes from the edges being directed. The acyclic part comes from the constraint that you cannot start from any node and follow the edges such that you will arrive back at the starting node. The sequence of edges you follow, guided by the direction of the arrows, forms a path. So in other words, there is no path starting with a node and leading back to itself. Here are two directed graphs. The one on the left is a DAG and the one on the right is a cyclic directed graph. The structure of a Bayesian network can only be a DAG, as the graph on the left. The graphical structure on the right is cyclic because we can start at the node A, go to B, go to C, and then go back to A again. Directed cycles are forbidden to be used as structures in Bayesian networks. Here's another DAG to demonstrate the relationships between nodes. For this DAG, we will use C, the green color node, as the target node or the node of interest. We will identify all of its relationships to the other nodes. Because there are directed edges from B and F to C, B and F are called parents of C. Since there is a directed edge from C to D, D is said to be a child of C. A is an ancestor of C because there is a path leading from A to C. E is said to be a descendant of C because there is a path leading from C to E. G and C are said to be co-parents because they share a common child, D. The Markov blanket of a variable is defined as its parents, children, and co-parents. As such, the Markov blanket of C is a set of variables B, F, D and G. The Markov blanket of a node is important because given the state of all the nodes in a Markov blanket, we know all we need to know to predict the node. The joint distribution P is the second major component of a Bayesian network. It is simply the joint distribution over all the variables U in the Bayesian network. The joint distribution of U may be written as probability of U is equal to probability of U1, comma, U2, comma, and so on up until u of n. However, we can use the chain rule to factorize the joint distribution as the probability of u is equal to the probability of u1 times the probability of u2 given u1 times the probability of u3 given u1 and u2 and so on up until the probability of un given u1 through un minus 1. Due to the Markov condition, we can further factorize the joint distribution p as the product of each variable's probability given its parents. Associated with each node or variable is a local probability model. 
The local probability model specifies the distribution of the variable given its parents. For discrete variables, the local probability model comes in the form of conditional probability tables, or CPTs. Here, we have a very simple graphical structure of a Bayesian network. There are only two nodes, A and B. Each of these variables are binary, since each of them can only have two states, true or false. Since A does not have any parents, its local probability model is a probability table which specifies the probability of its states. The value in these cells are simply probabilities. Note how they sum to 1. B has A as its parent. As such, its local probability model is a conditional probability table. We have to specify the probabilities of B as true or false when A is true. We also have to specify the probabilities of B as true or false when A is false. This time, the values in this table represent conditional probabilities. Across each row in the table, the values sum to 1. The Markov condition states that each node is conditionally independent of its non-descendant given its parents. Here is a DAG of a Bayesian network again, and we're going to focus on the node C. According to the Markov condition, C is conditionally independent of A and G given B and F. B and F are C's parents, and A and G are C's non-descendants. Once we have a Bayesian network, meaning we have defined its structure G and joint distribution P, and it satisfies the Markov condition, we are interested in querying the states of the variables. To start off, there are three query types that we may want to ask. We may want to ask, what is the marginal probability of every variable? This question asks the state of every node before we observe evidence. When evidence has arrived, we may then want to ask, what is the state of one variable given evidence on another? This type of query aims for the conditional probability. Lastly, if we interpret our Bayesian network as a causal one, we can also query for the causal impact of one variable on another. In this type of query, we are asking, given that we have intervened on one variable, what is the causal impact on another one? There are two broad categories of algorithms used in conducting inference. They are split into approximate and exact algorithms. Approximate algorithms use sampling and simulation to arrive at answers, and will give not the exact answer, but one that is close enough. Exact inference algorithms, on the other hand, typically uses a secondary structure to conduct the inference. Although beyond the scope of this talk, the joint tree is the secondary structure that is used frequently to conduct exact inference. PyBBN uses an exact inference algorithm to derive answers. Let's see how we can use PyBBN to create a Bayesian network and then query for the state of the variables with and without evidence. Here I'm creating a Bayesian network. This Bayesian network is very simple. There's only two nodes, A and B, where A is the parent of B. These nodes are also binary, having only two states, on and off. Before I can create a node, I create two variable instances to represent the variables. I then create the conditional probabilities associated with each node. The probabilities for A is simple, as it is simply a vector describing the probabilities of the two states. The conditional probability for B needs some explaining. Instead of a table or nested list, I flatten the table or nested list. You'll have to use your imagination to see how this flattened list of conditional probabilities come from a nested list. Each BBN node requires a variable and CPT instance. I've created two BBN nodes here, one for A and one for B. Finally, I'm ready to create a Bayesian network. I simply add the nodes and then an edge between the two nodes. In this code, I have to create a join tree from a Bayesian network. I've abstracted away creating the Bayesian network. It's the same code as before, but placed in a function. To get a join tree, I simply use the apply method from the inference controller. Lastly, here's a code snippet to get the posteriors to observe the state of each node. Now that we know how to create a Bayesian network and join tree, I create a simple interactive program to demonstrate how we can query the state of the variables and also how to assert evidences. I've abstracted away creating a Bayesian network, join tree, and printing the posteriors into their own functions. The essence of this program is to get the name of the variable in its state that we want to assert evidence for, and then query for the state of all the variables after. When I run this program, if I type in A followed by on, you can see the state of the variables B and A. Notice how A is 100% on, because that's the evidence we asserted. 
When A is 100% on, B is 80% on and 20% off. When I assert A is off, then A is 100% off and B is on 20% and off 80%. The results follow the conditional probabilities I specify. What's more interesting is if I assert evidence on B. When I assert evidence on B, I can observe the state of A. Going from B to A is diagnostic reasoning. When B is on, A is on 94% and off 6%. When B is off, A is on and off 50%. If I want to simply see the marginal probabilities of A and B, I hit enter without specifying a name. Thanks for watching. We'd love to hear your feedback to create better and new content. Please contact us by going to our website at https oneoffcoder.com. Until next time, happy coding, happy learning.